Welcome to the students at the Jamaica School of Preaching and Biblical Studies in Mona, Mona Heights, Kingston 6, Jamaica, West Indies. And welcome to those of you on the internet who are either joining now or will join later to watch the recorded version of the class. Good to have you students back from your Easter holiday. And we're going to begin at this time by going to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we pray that you will be with us in a special way. Help us, dear Lord, in the journey of life, that we will not get tired of doing what is right, but will be filled with so much love for you that we will make every effort to please you and to deny ourselves of thinking, feeling, saying, or doing what is wrong so that we may do what is right in your sight. We pray, dear Father, that you will be with us as we begin our Hebrew class for this trimester. May it be with those students that have graduated from here and who are working to build up the body of Christ all over the world. We pray for Joel Kotner in Grand Cayman, that you may give him strength, that he will be able to do your work successfully, help him to be a champion of your will in that island and the neighboring islands, and help him to be able, by your grace and power, to bring many people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pray for that island of Grand Cayman and the islands that belong to them that have been rocked by a recent court decision to legalize same-sex marriage. We give you thanks for the government of Grand Cayman and the Cayman Islands that suspended that judgment and pending further discussions, we pray that they will not legalize that thing. We pray that they will be successful in keeping the court from legalizing this unlawful union. We pray, dear Father, that you will be with us now as we begin our class. Help us to grasp sometimes hard to understand ideas. Help us to be able to master this language and the other biblical languages that we may use them to uncover meanings that are there in the scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we are continuing our look at lesson 16. I started it just one week before your exam. And there was no way that I could really do everything in that lesson and finish it before the exam. So I only gave you some basic questions on lesson 16 for your exam with the intention of reviewing what we had been doing from where I had left off last term. So we are looking at the review and the continuation of lesson 16 entitled Inseparable Prepositions. The general objectives for this lesson are one, to review lesson 16 entitled Inseparable Prepositions. Number two, to continue lesson 16, Inseparable Prepositions. The specific objectives are one, at the end of this lesson, the students will have reviewed the inseparable prepositions le, be, he, and min. Two, at the end of this lesson, the students will have reviewed how each of the inseparable prepositions attach itself to different nouns. And and what changes take place in the simple shiva that is under lay, 
be, he, and the changes that take place in attaching men to different nouns, such as in the lengthening of the vowel under M, or in the doubling of the first letter of the noun to which men is attached. Three, at the end of this lesson, the students will continue the remaining section of lesson 16 by translating words, phrases, and sentences. Four, at the end of this lesson, the students will also apply the teaching from expert Hebrew teachers on YouTube on the subject of inseparable prepositions. Now, for the purpose of letting you know how this week's lesson is divided, I will make it my aim in this time to review lesson 16 up to the point where I had stopped before the final exam. Tomorrow, God permitting, I hope to look at the remaining part of the lesson I had not gone through before the final exam came. So the review is today and the continuation of the lesson is tomorrow. Now that is what I plan to do. It may not work out that way. I just have to work within the time that I have and according to how much you are understanding as I go along. I don't want to finish this lesson just to try to be on schedule. The important thing is that you understand what is being taught. So the review of lesson 16, inseparable prepositions. There were three inseparable prepositions that I drilled you in before the final exam. And the first one is Lamed, which means two or four. So when you see Lamed, think of two or four. The second one is Bet, which means in or with or by. The third one is K, as or like. These prepositions have no existence as separate words. In other words, class, they do not stand by themselves. You will not find Lamed by itself, or Beth by itself, or Kaf by itself. They're going to be attached to a word. Okay, so they have no existence as separate words. But, like the definite article, they attach themselves as prefixes to the words they govern. Therefore, they are called inseparable prepositions. Rules governing inseparable prepositions. Now, this rule is the simplest rule. It is the most basic of the rules governing inseparable preposition. So rule number one, the inseparable prepositions are normally without a vowel under them. They are normally without a vowel under them. Now, usually when you have a consonant, a letter of the alphabet, you expect that there is going to follow it, either underneath it or to the left side of it, a vowel symbol. But these inseparable prepositions are normally without a vowel under them. For example, here is the word melek. M-E-L-E-C-H or in Hebrew, mem Segol, Lamed, Segol, Kaf. Melek, which means what? Melek means what? A king. Now, you have Le Melek. 
le is the inseparable preposition. Le, melek, and it means what? To a key. To a key. Then you have pe, melek, which means what? In a key. It could also mean with a king or by a king. For the purpose of the final exam last trimester, I just let you learn it as in. But pe may also be translated as with or by. Pe melek means what? As a king. As a king. Then there is the word Atham, what modern Hebrews pronounce as Adam. They don't make any distinction between the Dalet that has um, no Dagesh Lene in it and the Dalet that has Dagesh Lene. In Biblical Hebrew, when the Dalet has the Dagesh Lene in it, it has a D sound, but when it doesn't have the Dagesh Lene in it, it has a TH th sound. But in modern Hebrew, they just pronounce it either way as a D sound, D. Atha, meaning a man. Or it could be simply written as A-D-A-M, our word in the English Bible, Adam. The word Adam means a man. Okay, so le Adam or le Atam means to a man or with a man or by a man. Pe Atam means as a man. So what does le Atam mean? To a man. What does be atham mean? In a man or with a man or by a man? And what does ke atham mean? All right. Let me see how well you know it. Rain. Rain means what? Rising. I want you to tell us what does ke atta mean? Yeah. All right. Enrico, you're the rich man here. Maybe later on I will try to borrow some money from you. Just joking. So, Enrico, enrich us with your rich knowledge of people. What does be atta mean? Be atta. <laughs> or what does be mean by itself? What does the inseparable preposition be mean by itself? In. Like the Greek preposition n. You, you remember the Greek preposition n? It looks like our e and n. So N in Greek is the same as Be in Hebrew. N means in Greek in, with, or by, and Be means in, with, or by. What does Atam or Adam, A, D, A, Adam by itself means Amar. So, pe Adam would be what? Could mean by a man, yes. It could mean by a man. It could also mean with a man or in a man. Nor seats. What does pe Adam or Adam mean? Adam? Or what? What does Adam mean? The word Adam by itself, which is a noun, a naming word. What does 
A G A M in English letters B. You are red of Adam and E in the Bible. If you have read about Adam in Genesis, you know about Adam in Genesis. He was a man. Adam means a man. It also means a human being. So both Adam and Eve were known as Adam in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1. They were both human beings. And the, the woman was part of the man. She was one with the man. We have Mr. and Mrs. Adam. Adam is a man or a human being. The time when a man marries a woman, the woman bears the man's name. Yes. Adam is Adam is human. He's human. Okay. I mean, that is a logical thing to, to think. He was raised. From an Hebrew word that means living. So Eve, the woman, the first woman was called Eve because she was the one from was whom it living the one? all mm -hmm. living beings came. She was the mother of all who right. lived. That's why she was called all living. All human beings come from her. Alright, so Moving on, any question on rule number one? The inseparable preposition normally doesn't have a vowel under it, and it has in instead a shiwa that is two dots, one on top of the other, underneath each of them. Okay, and this was to illustrate it. Notice, no vowel. No vowel here, just a simple shawa. No vowel, simple shawa. Simple shawa. Simple, simple, simple shawa. No vowel. That's the normal case. No vowel, but a simple shawa. So, what, what does le mean? What does preposition le mean? Two. Two. What does the preposition be mean? In or with, or by. And what does ke mean? As. As. Okay. Well, we're moving on to the next rule. Number two. When the inseparable preposition is prefixed to a word whose first letter has a shiwa, for example, shemue, Samuel. Then since two shiwas cannot stand together at the beginning of a word as le shemuel. Notice the two shiwas. They can't go together according to the Hebrew grammar. This cannot work in Hebrew grammar. To have a simple shiwa right before another simple shiwa. Just cannot work. So the shiwa 
under the prefix, and the prefix is le, becomes karik. That is the short I sound, like in pit. So instead of having le, shemuel, it's now le, shemuel. The difference here is that this is not a silent shiwa, it's still vocal. So the simple shiwa that was under the lamed is removed and replaced by a vowel. So normally you don't have a vowel under the inseparable prepositions, but in this case it happens when you have a simple shiwa facing directly another simple shiwa, it forces the first simple shiva to become the short vowel I, kiri, short kiri, which is e as in fit, e. So this is li, and this is she. You still pronounce the simple shiva, she, mu, e. And Arain, this is part of Samuel's name that means God. Okay, um, Samuel means heard of God, heard of God. So here you find God at the very end of his name, Shemuel. Okay, so it's Lake Shemuel, Lake Shemuel. So when you have two Shuas coming one after the other, the first Shua is replaced by the short vowel I kiri or kiri. Note well, the second shiwa remains vocal, that is, it is to be pronounced, as it was before the preposition was attached. Ordinarily, without the lamed and the shiwa, you have shemue. But now that you have the leaf, Attached to Shemuel, the simple Shiva under the Shin in Shemuel is to be pronounced. So we have Shemuel, to so Samuel is Le Shemuel, in Samuel is Le Shemuel. Here's another word, Melakim means kings. It's the plural of Melek which is a king. Melaki means kings. me la ki me la ki It means kings. Two kings is li melaki Again, notice you don't have the first shua remaining because Hebrew grammar says you cannot have two shuas, simple shuas together. So the first shiva becomes a vowel. It becomes the vowel kiri, the short I sound. Le melakim means to kings. In kings is, this is supposed to be a kiri. The ink got away from me. So that's why it looks like this. So it's supposed to be simply a little dot. It's be melakim. Be Melaki in kings or with kings or by kings. Be not bad Melaki, but the simple shua becomes the vowel kari, short kari. Be Melaki. As Samuel is ki shemuel, not ke shemuel, but the simple shua at the beginning becomes a short kari, so we have ki. Shemuel as Samuel, he, Melakim as kings. So remember this rule number two. Since two Shabbos cannot stand together at the beginning of a word as Le Shemuel, the Shiva under the prefix Lamed becomes Kari, Le Shemuel. And the second shiva remains vocal as it was before the preposition was attached. I'm going to check the time because I promised you 10 minutes. The
approaching two minutes. Any questions on rule number two? I think this is all that you can handle right now. So we'll continue to review lesson 16 tomorrow, God willing. For as I said before to you and to all those on the internet, the important thing is not how fast I can go, but how much you understand. But that's really the goal. I want you to learn this language. I'm still learning it. Did you know that um, there are people from Israel, the modern state of Israel, that are sending me modern Hebrew words almost every day in my email? So that I can learn modern Hebrew. Modern Hebrew is written just like biblical Hebrew. It's not altogether pronounced in the same way, but generally the pronunciation is the same. So I am learning like you are learning. Hebrew from Israel, straight from Israel, and Hebrew from biblical Hebrew. Any questions so far? Okay, twelve nineteen. just a few seconds remaining. We will continue at rule number three, God willing, tomorrow, Friday. Okay, I'm going to be letting you out at this time because it's approaching 20 after 12. The usual time is 12.30, but the administration requires that the teachers give the students 10 minutes break. I didn't give it to them in the last class, and I had to give them extra time before the starting of the next class, which is this one. But I'm giving it back to them now. It's 20 after 12. Okay, so God willing, see you tomorrow. It's 12.20. Thank you, those from the internet who have joined us. It was good to have you with us. And stay tuned. Tomorrow we will continue with our class.